Hello, my name is Vic, and welcome back to another Caden Live 2021 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some basic video effects. No, I'm not talking about crazy video effects. I'm going to be talking about the most common ones that you would be using in any video production. We're going to talk about how to do fade in and fade out, changing the speed of your clips, doing zoom, panning motions, and cropping. We are using Caden Live version 21.04, which is the latest version at the time of this video. Once again, a bit of housekeeping to make sure that we're looking at the same interface. Make sure you click onto the editing workspace of Caden Live. We're going to set our project settings at 1080p, 24 frames per second. I'm going to bring in our project clipped here, which I downloaded from Pexels. It's going to ask me if I want to switch to 29 frames per second. I'm just going to click cancel and I'm going to bring this down into my timeline. I don't need the sound for this video. I'm going to remove it. So right click, ungroup clips, select the sound and press delete. Let's press play and see what we're working with. So it's a video of clouds just moving. The first effect I want to demonstrate to you is fade in and fade out. Fade in is very good for doing an intro. The easiest way to add a fade in is simply to hover over your track, go to the top left for a fade in where it begins. You'll see this blue button, click, and you will have a fade in. If you want to add a fade out, you go to the other end of the clip, you see this red button, and you click on that and you have your fade out. If we click on the clip, it will show up our effects that are applied onto that clip. In this case, we've got our fade in and we've got our fade out. We can manipulate the speed of our fade in and fade out by using the slider over here. Let me just zoom into my track. I'm pressing control, mouse wheeling up. Let's say right about there. I'm going to go back here and adjust my fade in. So you can see the fade in getting longer or shorter. So let's make it a little bit longer and let's see how that affects. Pressing the space bar to play, we see quite a long fade in. And if we want to make that a lot shorter, we can reduce this down. Let's click back to the beginning, press space bar to play. And we've got a smoother fade in. If I don't like those effects, I can delete them from here. Or if I want to preview without the effect is I can disable that effect. So I've disabled the fade in. And now what we have is no fade in, even though the effect is still applied. So that's a quick way for you to go back and forth to test whether or not an effect is something that you like or not. Let me just delete the fade in and fade out. The next effect that you will probably be commonly using is speeding up or doing a faster motion. So this is a good example of something that's slow. If I want to speed this up to get a little bit of a time lapse effect, what I can do is right click on the clip and change the speed. Now you can see here the speed is currently set at 100%. If I want to change it to 200, I can just type in 200. And as you notice, the duration also decreases. So before, if it was at 100, we have it at a minute and six seconds. If we reduce it, if we increase it to 200%, it jumps down to 33 seconds. If we have sound, we can make the pitch compensation as well for the audio. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that. And when we're adjusting the speed, we can also reverse the clip. We will demonstrate this in a different video clip shortly. Let me just press OK. And as you notice, our clip has reduced in length in the timeline. Let's just press play to see what that looks like. The clouds are moving a little bit faster. I want to move that even faster. I'm going to right click, change the speed. Let me increase this to something crazy like 500%. Click OK. It's shortened our clip once more. Let me go back to the beginning, press play, and we can see it. it's moving a lot faster. 
let me just do that one more time. Right click, change the speed. This time, let's do 1000%. OK. And now we should get a really nice effect. When you're speeding up clips, you don't really have to worry about the frames per second. But when you are slowing down a clip, you want to work with as many frames per second as possible. Meaning when you're shooting your original clip, you want to shoot with at least 60 frames per second. I'm not a videographer, but this is just based on my experience of doing speeding up and slowing down. If you want to slow down a clip that is 30 frames per second, it's gonna look a bit bumpy and janky, and it's gonna look a little bit unprofessional. But if you slow down a clip that is at least 60 frames per second, you're gonna get that smoother slow motion effect. Let me just delete this clip. I'm gonna add in another clip over here. And this is a waterfall. I'll bring this into my timeline. And what I'll do is I'm just going to ungroup. So if you're interested in the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift and G to ungroup. Or if you don't, you can right click and ungroup the clips. I'm going to get rid of the sound because we don't need the sound and it's a bit noisy. Move this to the front and let's just press play to see what we've got here. So this clip, by the way, is 60 frames per second. Let's right click on the clip properties. You can see the frame rate here. It was recorded in at least 60 frames per second. The same thing applies. We can increase the speed and reduce the speed, but in this case, we want to reduce the speed. I'm going to right click, change the speed. And as an example, let's just reduce it down by 50%. Let's press play, see what that looks like. As you can see there, we've got the flow of the water slowing down. Let's try to push the limit a little bit and change the speed even further down. Let's try 30%. Now it's really starting to look a bit choppy and this is where that increased frame per second of recording really allows you to get a smoother slow motion effect. This is only recorded in 60 frames per second. In my experience, the limits are about at the 40 or 50 mark. Let me increase that to 40% in terms of slowing down. It's a little bit smoother and probably that's about as smooth as we're gonna get. Now that you know how to do speeding up and slowing down, you can start doing cool things like speeding up a certain portion of a clip and then slowing it down. So let's just demonstrate that. I'm going to make a cut right about here. This is just random, just to demonstrate, for example. Let me delete this front part and let's just work with this section over here. Let me change the speed back to 100 so that we're starting from scratch. Press play. Let's say I want to slow it down right here. What I can do is make a cut right here and then select this clip and then let me change the speed to 40%. Now what that's gonna do is we're gonna have this effect where it's full speed and then slow motion and let's say right about there I want to make a cut again and make it bring it back up to full speed. So pressing S, clicking on this clip, right click, change speed, and do 100%. So this is one of those things that you can do when you're trying to time your video with some background music. You've got a part that's full speed, you want to slow it down, find the beat drop, and then bang. Just a quick tip for you. Another thing that you are commonly doing is zooming into video. So let's demonstrate that. I'm gonna bring in my cloud clip here again, and I'm gonna remove the sound. One of my favorite effects and tools is the transform tools. So let's go to effects, and let's type on transform. And let's drag this into our video clip. Click on the video clip, and we will see our options for our transform here. If you don't see this box, 
make sure that your effect and composition stack is available. If you don't see that, you can go to view and find that you need to check this box, effects and composition stack. If you still don't see it, make sure that you're clicking on the editing workspace so that you're getting the same interface that I am using over here. The transform tool is very powerful. It's one of my favorite tools here. You can use the mouse to move your clip left, right, or wherever you need to move it. You can change the size of the clip. So I can drag these handles up and down to resize. Here I can also lock and unlock the aspect ratio. Locking and unlocking the aspect ratio in this case doesn't affect my video aspect ratio that much, but it might distort your photos or some other videos for that matter. Here we can also change the opacity so we can make something a little bit more transparent or opaque. Also, we can make adjustments in the rotation of our clip so we can rotate either way. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset everything. And the way I can do that quickly is just to delete the effect and then I will reapply back. So let's say I just want to do a simple zoom in. I want to zoom into this section over here. So what I can do is I can zoom in over here. I'll change the size to let's say about 120%. Press tab, it zooms in. I can adjust the frame of view. I think I want it to be a little bit closer. So let me do 150, just for example. Let me move it a little bit around right there. You've also got some alignment tools here. So if you want to align it to the left, you can align it to the left. You can align it to the top. In this case, I want to align it to the middle and perhaps maybe the middle vertically as well. And maybe that's what I want. So the transform tool is very powerful and you can use this to compose one video over another. So just as a quick example, let's add another video underneath. What I'll do is I will switch this to video track number two and I'll bring this down to video track number one. Let me get rid of the sound and I'll overlay on this on top of each other. Now you can't see the video at the bottom yet because we're fully covering it. But what I can do is reduce the size to 50%. Let's for, say, for example, and now I have picture in picture type of effect. So this is good if you want to add a video recording of yourself on your webcam at the bottom left or in the bottom right, like in this case. And when we press play, we've got two videos, one over the other. Now, just to demonstrate a bit about the opacity, I can decrease this, make it a little bit more transparent. As you can see there, it's getting more transparent, our little clip, when I press play. So you might be interested in doing that. The last effect I want to talk about in this video today is our cropping tool. So we've got our cloud clip again over here. I've removed the sound. I'm going to effects. And what I'll do is I will just search for crop. So we've got the edge crop here, a few different options, crop by padding, crop scale and tint. For my purposes, I like to use the edge crop. I'm gonna drag it and apply it to my clip. Click on the clip and we've got our options for our edge crop over here. So I can crop the top. I'm using the mouse wheel to mouse up or I can drag this the left and right, the slider. I can crop to the left, crop the bottom if I want, and I can crop to the right. So this is a good way if you want to try to achieve a little bit more cinematic, so you want that screen reduction a little bit more like that, or if you've watched the latest Justice League, you can do like a four by three sort of effect. And that's it for today's video. I hope that you learned something today. I would appreciate it if you do a like and a subscribe. More videos to come with our Kaden Lab tutorials, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.